In this lesson, we're gonna talk about the functionality and usage of pricing and total cost of ownership calculators. In the previous lessons, I talked about things that influence cost and things you can do to reduce your cost. But a pricing calculator helps me ascertain what my likely costs are going to be. Now, garbage in is garbage out. I need to have a good idea of what resources I'm going to use, what my architecture look like, how many instances I'm gonna be running for what periods of time. But if I have that information, I can feed that into the calculator and it will give me an estimate of what my costs are. And I already showed the calculator in the previous lesson. If we jump over, the whole point of the pricing calculator is I add the services that I intend to use. So I already added one type of virtual machine. And what's important about this is obviously there's a certain set of attributes. Which region am I creating it in? Is it Windows or Linux? Um, what type of instance? That's obviously a huge aspect. How many of them are running? And then you also get to things like, well, notice it's not asking me for how long they're running for because I'm saying use reserved instance. So that means that I'm gonna get billed 100% of the time. But if I turn that off, I could then say, well, maybe I don't have 10 running 24 hours a day for the entire month. And so I might tweak this based on the actual number of hours. Maybe it's only running for 500 hours. So I have to feed in the details of not just what is being used, but how much is being used. Now it's trying to help me. With an OS, I likely have disks. So at minimum, I'm gonna have an operating system disk. So I can tell it, well, what type of OS disk do I want to have? And depending on the type of VM, you'll have different types of disks available. This is not an S variant, so it can't use the premium. If I was to change this, for example, to one of the S variant disks, it doesn't matter which one I pick, I'll just pick that one for simplicity. For my disks, then you get things like premium SSD are available. So I'd give it the criteria of, well, what's the redundancy? How big is it? And then optionally, so I'm gonna have one of those, I might have more than one. Remember, I might have data disks as well. And they might be different sizes, so I would go ahead and then just add disks as part of another cost element. If I was to search, for example, um, I could do storage account here and go and look at my storage account. In my storage account, we have the idea here of manage disks. So this is where I could go and add additional disks that I might be using. So I'll say, oh, I've got four of those disks. And it's asking me things like, well, transactions, because you pay for transactions as well. And what you would basically do is you would go through and add in all of the elements. Hey, look, is there bandwidth? Internet egress, you pay for that beyond a certain amount. You get some free, but then beyond that, I start paying. And it varies based on the region. So it's asking me, well, what region are you creating this network egress in? Because you're gonna pay a certain amount of money. So you would essentially make sure you've got an architecture of your solution and then go in and add all of the different elements you have into here to get the cost. And once you've done that, you can actually go through and there's tools where you can then export this out. I could save it as a certain name. I could share it and make it available to someone else. I could add various types of support into here. I could add different types of licensing program. So there's things that I can then do with this. But the whole point here is help me estimate the cost of the Azure resource. Now the Azure resource is one dimension. It's a big dimension, but there are others. There's the whole operational model of it. And if I'm trying to move a workload from on-premises to the cloud, often we have to show a total cost of ownership. People wanna understand from a business perspective, well, what am I gonna save by moving to the cloud? And if I think about running things on premises, well, hey, there's physical structures, there's electricity bills, there's cooling, there's operational staff, and there's still elements of things like the staff involved in the cloud, but the responsibilities shift. 
So if I'm trying to understand the change in total cost of ownership, there's a separate calculator. So now, if we go and look at the total cost of ownership calculator, this goes through a number of phases. So this is gonna let me define my existing workflows in terms of servers, databases, storage, and networking. Then I can tweak certain assumptions and then view what it thinks it's gonna save me. So I can add certain on-premises workloads and I could add multiple different workloads. So I'm saying, hey, these are virtual machines. I'm running a certain OS. I've got, I don't know, say 10 of these. I'm using VMware today. They have, I don't know, we'll say eight cores and 16 gigabytes of memory. Um, I could add additional ones. So I could add multiple different types of all the different VMs and workloads I have. I could add certain databases that I'm running. I could add certain types of network attached storage that I have in my environment. I could add all the different details there. I can add the amount of network bandwidth I'm using. So I add in all these various details. Obviously I'm not putting in a lot of detail here, but then I can go and tweak assumptions. So assumptions are things like, well, what licensing benefits I might be able to bring. Do I want GRS, so I'm geo-redundant resiliency. Should I consider the use of B-series virtual machines which are burstable? What are my electricity costs currently? And then costs around, well, what I pay for storage and labor costs and all these other things. But ultimately, once you've filled all that in, it's gonna give you an idea of well, what it thinks your on-premises costs are, and then what your Azure costs are, and then how much it's gonna save you over the next, in this case, five years. But you could tweak that time frame. You could tweak the region, licensing programs, etc. So the whole point of that total cost of ownership calculator is to help me maybe work out, hey look, this is the benefit. Because obviously it's gonna cost you money to move to the cloud. It's not, oh, it's happened. So you're gonna spend some money to move to the cloud, to retool, to educate, but then this is what I can save by doing that move.